Hey CFI, hey Gregor here, and we are kicking off another insider. And this month it is all going to be about safety. So guess who we have as our guest today, Miss Lisa Goneman, our VP of Safety. Say hello, Lisa. Uh, hey, greetings, drivers. <laughs> Hey, uh, needless to say, we've got a really good agenda today, talk through quite a few items, and I think a lot of information that's going to be good to share. But um, Lisa, would you give us just a real quick safety message to get us started off? I sure will, Greg. I appreciate that. Uh, welcome. Um, you know, as we go into this time of year, uh, we're going to talk about you know, not less about the weather, but there's still some rain, different conditions out there. So speed for the right conditions is very important. Uh, we're gonna start getting into construction zones. So we're gonna have to slow down, slowing down when we get into towns and into traffic, uh, looking still as weather, but it's gonna be more rain. There could be some ice, some fog, some freezing fog, a little bit of everything that we encounter out there. So. Uh, make sure you adjust your speed for the conditions and where you are traveling. Yep, that's a great one. Thank you for doing that. Um, so as we're talking safety, it appears that the month of April is Distracted Driving Awareness Month, which is obviously a big one on all of our parts to make sure that even as non-professional drivers, we're, uh, we're not fiddling around doing things we shouldn't be. But knowing that safety is a core value of what we do every day, and most importantly, you are the captain of your ship, whether you're uh, a professional driver or an employee or an independent contractor, it's important that we take note in making sure that we all practice what we preach every day. So um, with that, I would like to, uh, first of all, welcome you to your first true <laughs> insider. Um, and then and secondly, and most importantly, just kind of give a, a quick snapshot of kind of what you've done over your career and, and talk just a smidge about safety before we jump into the meat of the agenda. I, I sure will. So, Greg, I've been in safety now. It's kind of scary to say, but on June 1, it'll be 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've uh, been here and, and around for a while. I actually studied this stuff, if you believe it or not. I have my degree in transportation and logistics uh, from Iowa State University. Grew up as a farm girl, went to Iowa State, um, studied it, and I first started out at Schneider National Carriers. Spent 18 years at Schneider uh, working in operations, but very heavy into safety. Moved on to Ruan Transportation, where I spent seven and a half years. And then I started with Transport America. And now as the companies are merging together, very excited to lead the safety department uh, for CFI and, and all the different divisions out there. So safety has been something that has been a passion for me, if you want to say for a long time. And it really goes back to an experience I had uh, when I was in high school. Um, growing up on the farm, my uh, brother was working on an anhydrous ammonia tank that he was gonna take out in the field. And he had uh, he was hovered over it. He didn't have his PPE, PPE on and a valve burst and it went right into his face and eye. Um, they thought he was going to be blind. He, he is able to see, but it was a long recovery for him. And ever since then, I've been very passionate about safety and how can we keep each other safe? And uh, if you're if you're like my husband at home, I'll hand him the safety glasses out in the garage or whatever it takes. Um, he loves me coaching uh, him as he drives, but I'm very passionate about the safety piece. So that's kind of where it all started for me. Well, we won't hold the uh, Iowa State against you, um, knowing that, uh, you know, that's that's a uh, a big farm farming community and I grew up on a farm, so I can very much appreciate that. And I can only imagine that your husband being an attorney really likes uh, getting a lot of coaching uh, from yes. you from a safety perspective. So I'm sure that uh, that is an interesting environment at home, no doubt. Well, hey, let's talk uh, maybe a quick snapshot of what is what's really driving some of the challenges from a CSA perspective around maintenance violations. So really what it comes down to, there's a couple of things that are happening for roadside inspections. Uh, number one is roadside inspections are increasing. You know, we went through COVID and there weren't very many inspections. Well, uh, I won't say COVID's over, but the inspectors are back out there. And uh, we're seeing that roadside enforcement is actually 
investing a lot in technology as well. And they're using what's called some of these thermal detectors. Yeah. So all they have to do is get out their little tool and determine if there's some heat, if there's something wrong with brakes or tires, and voila, they know exactly where to look very quickly and uh, thus the violation. So we have to, they're being more diligent, so we have to be more diligent in uh, making sure that we're doing those very thorough inspections. The other thing that I'll share is most drivers, I think, are aware of this, but um, you know, our goal was to eliminate all of the 2007 model years tra year trailers in, in this year for uh, CFI and the majority of the 2008s. So when you think about getting rid of a lot of the older equipment that typically has more breakdowns, that's our goal is to get rid of those this year and, and shed some of that uh, headache that we've had over the last couple of years. So exactly. good message. Yep. The other thing I'd add in there is as our CSA scores go up, as a driver of the road, you're going to start feeling it too, because that emergency selection system is what the roadside inspectors use to determine who comes in for that inspection. So as our numbers go up, you're going to get pulled in more. So help us out and really make sure that we're doing that inspection and getting stuff fixed. Yep. Great message. Great message. And, and, Refresh me, Lisa. Didn't we just go through a um, course or something to where now we can actually certify our own drivers from a hazmat perspective? So if anybody is needing or wanting to get their hazmat endorsement, yes, CFI has the ability to help you. So there was a new regulation that went into place in February. It's called uh, entry level driver training, but a piece of that is if any driver that has never had a hazmat endorsement wants to get one, they have to go through a training school to get that endorsement. So CFI is set up as a school. So if you want your endorsement, we can get you certified. Uh, we once the completion, the courses are completed. We have to go to a website and enter that. So when you go to the DOT of your state of residence, that certification that you have completed the training is in there, and that will allow you to be able to take then the state test to get your HAZMAT endorsement. So yes, we have that ability and we're excited to offer that to our fleet. Awesome, awesome. Well, hey, I think we're, we're I got one last thing and I know uh, you had one other item we want to talk about real quick, but just as a heads up professional drivers, uh, we did receive notification from our OEMs manufacturers of our equipment that um, the technology that is basically recognizing the cars next to us as we're traveling up and down the roads today uh, appears that starting sometime probably around June. Uh, we will not be able to get that technology in any of our manufacturers trucks. And I, as much as I hate saying it, this all this product is being made over in Poland and it is like one provider that actually makes this technology today, uh, which is just crazy. But knowing that there's a war going on over close to Poland, they've shut the factories down and it appears that there's no insight as to when this technology will come back. So as we get closer to that and we see that that is going to impact us, we will definitely let each driver know that that technology is not there, that they need to be overly alert. Um, and, and we are going to continue to take deliveries of the new trucks. It's just going to be minus that technology. But once they start producing it, uh, we should be able to get it in the shops and get it taken care of and actually put in place. It's not hard to install. It's just, again, they're not producing it. So I know you had uh, one one last thing you wanted to share with the group as well around, I think, maybe some training. I did. So and, and just a, a comment on the safety uh, uh, tools, you know, the, one of the, the biggest safety feature in a truck, Greg, is it still comes down to that driver. So um, yeah. that driver is is the most important piece. Technology is a tool to help support that driver. But uh, we have great drivers out there. Um, and thus, that leads me into kind of our, our training. So I mentioned earlier, just uh, as a reminder, our Q1 training, uh, we're going to do quarterly training for drivers, just as a lot of professions out there um, have uh, continued education courses, you know, doctors, my husband complains it all the time about lawyers. Uh, but yeah, it's continued education that they have to do, accountants, all that different stuff. And as a professional driver, we will continue to do that as well on a quarterly basis. So quarter one, 
was the hazmat training. And quarter two is going to be some uh, work on construction zones and work zones, uh, some awareness as we're going to go into that season. And then it's also a straightforward safety driving refresher um, because uh, that's coming up and we just want to make sure that everybody has the, is ready to be safe out there because we also have two roadside initiatives coming up here really quick too. International Road Check is on May 17 to 19, but with a focus on wheel ends. So basically everything around wheels. Uh, so make sure you're doing your pre-trip on that one. And then Operation Safe Driver Week is July 10 to 16, and the inspectors will be focusing on speeding. So full week of watch your speeding and, and make sure you're using your straightforward safety uh, uh, safe driving uh, rules. So um, just a reminder to the folks out there of why we're doing that and to cool. get it done. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. It's always good to have some refreshers and just keep people uh, focused on the right items. So, well, again, hey, Lisa, thank you for joining me today. Appreciate you being a part of this. And uh, I know a lot of good info here, uh, hopefully not overload, but uh, if everybody can take a nugget out of this, it's always uh, a benefit. So um, I guess, gang, with that, we appreciate what you do out there know that uh, we're continuing to keep, I'll say, North America moving because we're obviously moving uh, Mexico, U.S. and Canada. And uh, I want to make sure and make that clear that we're moving North America, not just America. But let's keep doing it. Uh, do it the best we can. Know that we're the best in the industry, the most respected brand in the industry. And again, thank you all for what you do and have a great and safe week. We'll see you. Yes. Thank you. Be safe.